Rain barrels. What can I tell you about these things? Well, so this is uh, an IBC tote, and I think it's 250 gallon to 300 gallon tank. And uh, the color is not a coincidence. It's black. And the thought pros process behind that is it'll block the sunlight, kind of like a garden cloth blocking sunlight to get to the weeds and the weeds die, but it'll block the sunlight. So hopefully no algae will uh, be able to grow inside the tank. So that that's kind of a, a nifty thing that you want to try and implement for your tank. This is also a food grade tank. So I would feel, I'm going to show you a couple tips about making sure you're not just collecting water, but that it's actually clean water. But I would say I wouldn't drink water directly out of this thing, even though it's food grade and I'm going to show you the other things, but I would drink it from this if I ran it through a Berkey filter. Uh, and we have a Berkey filter in the house. I'll have to do a separate video on that. But, uh, so this is, um, like I said, 250, 300 gallon, and it takes one rainstorm to fill this up, just one. And we're using uh, the barn roof, which is 30 foot long, and it's uh, it's uh, 24 foot wide. And uh, like I said, one inch of rain, not even one inch of rain, like 0.7 inches, I did the math, and that fills up this tank. And just so you can do the math for your own tank and your own roof, uh, I looked at it and it looks like um, if you have a 10 by 10 foot roof and it rains one inch on that roof, uh, that'll give you approximately 60 gallons of water. So you can either, you know, look at the roof sizes you have available and figure out, you know, what tank size you want based off of that or just, uh, it gives you an idea of what to expect. So, and... You can get one of these rain gauges. I haven't actually installed it yet, uh, but you can get familiar with what kind of rainfall happens in your neck of the woods. But I mean, typically one inch of rain, I think is pretty typical for a normal rainstorm, uh, you know, depending on how fast it comes. Uh, you, you could get rainstorms that have like four to five inches of rain. That's gonna cause like your flood if it comes like in a two to three hour period, but Anyway, you can kind of get familiar with what, what what happens in your neck of the woods and what roof spaces you have available and what kind of size tank you're going to need. But anyway, let's let's talk about some of the uh, other ways to try and keep the water clean. So uh, this is just a piece of plastic. It's like a plastic sign. I just found it in the basement. But um, some people have like fancy clean out systems and I, I actually haven't even researched it. I've heard about it, but you know, the water comes through into some kind of temporary holding tank. If you can imagine, you know, you see the, the bird poop, well, up on your barn roof or your wherever, uh, whatever roof you're using also has uh, bird poop and nasty stuff like that. So it's kind of like a dirty dish and you want the dish to be washed before you start to collect water. And so it's a good idea to let the rain fall and clean the system like a big washing machine. And you don't want to, you won't, don't want that water to go into your tank because it's going to be dirty and nasty. So you, you should have a way to, to prevent that. And that's what this, this little piece of plastic does. And it worked pretty well. We've had a couple of rainstorms so far and, you know, <laughs> because it's white, I was actually able to see the water coming out of my downspout here and it was like brown and nasty. And I watched it for a while and I could see when eventually it became clear and clean. And so you want to let the rain like wash off your roof for 10, five to 10 minutes. And then you can, uh, you can take this off. The water will be clean, but then there's one more filter system that I got in there that I'll show you. I just threw this cap on there to kind of cover the white because the white, I guess, will let sunlight through and not supposed to be any sunlight. So maybe I need to find one of these that's black. But this is the cap. I just put this rock to hold it there. Let me see if I can show you here. So, whoo, I got to clean that. Uh, but this is a bug net. I don't know if you can see this, but I just picked this up from Walmart. It's a, it's a bug net, like a mosquito net, like a net you might throw over your head when you're like cutting the lawn or something and i just i just bought it from walmart cut a square out of it and fastened it with a rubber band around there 
and uh, what that was meant to keep out was like big pieces of uh, like leaves and branches and stuff. And when, after the rainstorm that came through, there was a pile of leaves and branches and stuff that collected there. And I guess it also got some sediment stuck in there too. I guess I'll take that off and clean that. But uh, I mean, it, it did a good job. It did what it was supposed to do and like the water. You know, sorry about that. Something happened with my battery or storage space. But anyway, so I was about to say, uh, yeah, that, that net under there worked good. It caught all the big stuff. I should clean that off. Uh, but another important thing I noticed is this downspout, depending on how you have it configured, will drop water into the hole. And I guess I should show you how close it is. But I started out by putting this thing like right in the middle of the hole. And what I found was the water actually comes out so fast that it was overshooting the hole and it was like hitting this back wall of the cap or rim or whatever. And it was like splashing up and not really, a lot of it wasn't going into the tank. So then what I did was I backed it up. Like you can see, it's like at the very back end of the hole and that was catching the water almost entirely. And again, it's just the orientation of how I did this. Maybe some of you might put this up a little bit and put one more elbow that actually points down into the tank. But another thing that happened when I added the bug net was the water kind of like skipped over the net. <clears throat> A lot was still going in the tank, but a lot was also kind of skipping and jumping out. So I took this lid and I put it, I just kind of nuzzled it over the end there. And so there was like this little gap where the water was coming at the bottom of the downspout and it was shooting in. This little gap down here was just perfect and it must have kind of hit the back wall and then ricocheted up and fell down in the tank. So it worked out for me, but you might have to experiment like that depending on uh, the exact orientation of your downspout. So on that note, um, I'm gonna put that back. Let's take a look, quick look at the downspout. Oh, and I forget if I already mentioned it, but the, tell me if you like the rocks. Okay, let me know if you like the rocks because uh, <laughs> my wife didn't like the rocks at first, but I think they're growing on her. It's, it, it's nice, uh, it, it's got a nice character to it. If you dry stack them like this, you gotta be careful though. Make sure you, you put your biggest rocks on the bottom and you do a good job of putting that puzzle together. We just had so many rocks left over from like our new homestead projects. Uh, it, it was easy for me to find rocks and, and make this, but the higher your tank, the better, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And you can use pallets. What I might do is maybe put the pallets on top of the rocks, but I just like the rocks because it was nice and solid and strong. But the higher you get this, the better, because then you can run water like anywhere you want. And this tank is located at the highest part of our homestead. So pretty much we can run water out of this tank anywhere we want to run it on the homestead. Uh, and maybe even into the goat barn there. It should have enough hydraulic water head. But maybe if I put it up on those pallets, it would definitely be able to get to a sink in there. But yeah, I wanted to show you the... Uh, and then we put these rocks down just the other night because when I opened this, we had two rainstorms so far. And when I opened the first one, it like eroded a hole in the ground, like a big hole from all that water rushing out of there. So I put these rocks down to kind of prevent that from happening. But I wanted to show you real quick the downspout system. Uh, so really all it was was I had three 10 foot downspouts. Obviously there's a gutter along the back of the roof and I'll have a separate video, I guess, about gutters if someone wants, uh, expresses an interest in that. But I, mean, <laughs> I just jimmy rigged it. You gotta make sure you start high and finish low so the water will drain all the way down the back. That was a challenge because it it's 30 feet. So to get all that water to come to this corner was kind of a challenge, but I did. And then right at the very corner back there, I don't know if you can see it, but I have like this little plastic elbow, like trunk elephant trunk hose thing that you can connect the downspout to the bottom of the gutter and it you can kind of wrap it around corners and make it do whatever you want it to do. But I just put these uh, 10 foot down spout pieces, one right inside the other. They have a big end and a small end and they just kind of telescope inside one another. And I made sure to put the uphill one inside of the downhill one so the water kind of stays in there. But I mean, it, I didn't rivet anything together. I didn't have that tool. I don't own that tool, I should say, but 
I, you know, I just, I wanted to test it out. I did tie it with a wire over there and another wire here. So it, it's not going anywhere and it's protected from the wind on this side, but I just wanted to get it up and give it a try. Um, I didn't want to make it completely permanent and maybe that's a good thing because in the winter time I'll be able to just quickly disconnect it right there and maybe run a different downspout that way or something because the thing is that I haven't figured out yet is you can't really use these things in the winter time unless you have a, a bubbler or some kind of heat to, to keep it from freezing and busting. I don't think this tank is designed to handle that kind of pressure from it freezing. But um. Yeah, or, or maybe, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I, I have given thought to putting running this tank inside of our basement and maybe catching water. But in the wintertime, you can melt snow. I don't know. I need to still think about that part. But, uh, yeah, got some options. I've made it, so I have some options. So I think that's all I, uh, all I have to share about this water tank at the moment. So if any of that information was useful to you, please give it a like and subscribe for more and uh if you have any questions let me know in the comments below this video or any experiences with these uh please also leave a, a comment or a discussion so we can all kind of figure out what we need to know about these water tanks so i guess until next time stay strong be wise be a survivor homesteader